Hey, so if I do a video about this, a while back, as an experiment, I took this Pentel art brush and took apart the inside and tried to refill it with my own ink. And in this case, I used Indie ink, just sort of standard, bog standard Chinese Indian ink or China ink. China ink. Depends on where you are, they call it Indian ink or China ink, or this has got both. Chan, or Indian ink in English. Um, and it kind of worked for a little while. It was sort of fun. It definitely was the, this kind of art brush comes with a water-based, uh, pigment-based dye, or dye-based, I should say, ink. That's uh, not, it's, it's definitely not waterproof. It's like watercolor more than anything. If you get it white at all, it just flows like crazy. And if that's, when you're into that, that's fine. But I actually use a lot of permanent inks more. I prefer things like uh, the Pentel pocket brush because it comes with a permanent ink native to its cartridges. Um, but I've been looking for ways to both, well, I look for an ink ultimately to try to refill those cartridges. I wish that Pentel would make its ink available in bottles, but it doesn't. And uh, I've also been curious about finding ways to be able to refill these things. They're largely disposable. This entire part is the cartridge, the refill cartridge, and you just keep the heads in theory. Um, thing is, with the Indie ink, it basically started clogging up and I had to add some water and it's basically become kind of a wash brush so I can do ink washes with it but it's, it's not very good and the ink does tend to kind of screw with the the brush so it's been sticky and and less than ideal for a while now I'm planning on trying to wash it out and see if I can salvage it but I have this other one that used to have sepia in it and uh, it's empty now it's 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 a not working anymore. So I wanted to try my refill strategy again. So one of the things that happened is when I opened this up, I found an interesting interior structure. So let's have a look see. We'll, you'll find it's in here again. One thing about these art brushes is they unscrew in a counterintuitive way. So a lot of times if you, you go to unscrew it and it's like, oh no, it's jammed. Well, it's actually because it screws the other way. There's even an arrow to help you out, see? But often I've, I've not noticed that. And then you open it up, we have this head and there's a little uh, nipple there that feeds into the feed for the brush. And the feed here is a lot like a, uh, a, the kind of feed you'd find on a fountain pen. You're going to want some paper towel or whatever handy, by the way, it gets messy. Um, and that's one of the concerns why you want to be careful what kind of ink you use, because this feed is basically a very fine interior structure, and then you have the fine hairs of the, of the synthetic bristles. And anything that's going to clog up, so Indian ink, for example, has very large pieces of pigment Plus, it also has the uh, lacquer medium, uh, which is what gives it that shine when it dries. And the lacquer is terrible when it dries on brushes. You just can't get it off. It's done. So the water-based dye, uh, dye-based uh, inks uh, that these come with, they're going to have no solid pieces of pigment. Uh, it's going to be pretty much all liquid. And any ink you put in here, it's got to be something that's going to work with this feed. So you're looking for things that are basically either repeatograph inks or fountain pen inks. And the problem with both of those is that uh, fountain pen ink doesn't tend to be typically permanent, and repeatograph ink tends to still have the issue of potentially drying on the brush. So there's some risk there. But you definitely want these over, say, a latex ink or an India ink both of which are much too prone to clogging and have very large pigment particles that will clog the feed mechanism. So this is an important issue. You don't want to just use any ink. You can, for a period of time, have some success with these kinds of inks, but in time it's going to clog and destroy the brush and sort of defeat the purpose of trying to prolong the life of such a thing while still refilling it yourself. So to take it off your head, there's a small seam right here at the, at the base of this. If you look a blade, is usually the best way to get in there. Wiggle it in gently and push. There it goes, pops up. Pretty safe. Now watch what happens when I pull this out. Look at that, long tube. Now, at first I was puzzled because there did was some ink left in this barrel, but on this time I let this dry out even more. It's gonna become even more run out of ink. And I found almost no ink left in this barrel. So I believe there's some way for the ink to get from inside the barrel to this. But when I initially tried refilling the barrel to refill the brush, especially with the India ink, I found that it didn't flow at all. Um, 
I was a little puzzled by this thing's structure. It appears to have no openings that I can find. And when you give it a little pull, this comes off, and there's another barrel inside the barrel. So I'm not sure what's going on there. If there is ink, if the ink that's in here is actually part of the ink reservoir, I don't understand how it gets into this, because I explored it, and I found no holes that I could, I could discover. There's no holes here, there's a little cap. There's no holes at this end. So my theory is this is actually the ink cartridge. It's about twice the capacity of your average cartridge for uh, a fountain pen or a fountain brush. And that would make a lot of sense. And then we have sort of this barrel and barrel thing, I guess, to, to control flow somehow. I'm not sure. Maybe there is a way for the ink to get from here to this. Um, in which case, yeah, it's about controlling their flow rate. But my theory is this is the thing we need to refill. So I'm going to try it, and I'm going to use platinum carbon black ink, which I've had a lot of success with now. I use it uh, car platinum carbon black ink in my Kirataka number no. 8 fountain pen, and I plan on trying to refill both my Pentel pocket brush and the Kirataka manually from this bottle. But I figured this would be a good time to try it on this. And I also have this handy syringe. It's a, it's a blunt syringe. It came from a, a, a printer refilling kit. And I believe you can get things like this at the hardware store or uh, office supply store. Um, you can definitely get syringes like this one that have no point. But it's a little hard to get that thing into fine areas and actually refill the ink with it. It go everywhere. Whereas this, you can get right in there and control. So I don't think it's going to take very much ink. I'm going to suck up about that much. Let's try that to start. So I'm going to put it all the way in and give it a squeeze. Whoop! There we go. Even that is enough to overflow, it looks like. Okay. Now. Carefully putting this back in. It's going to overflow a bit more. Just placing some ink. Push down the seal. I put down some blank paper to catch all this so I didn't get on my desk. Now, it's messy. Put this back in the body. Now, I, I think that there's probably some flow between this body and the interior cartridges that I just showed you. Because one of the ways you get more ink to flow in these pens is by giving this a squeeze. Um, and that causes more ink to come out of the brush. So there's gonna be some sepia left in this. It wasn't completely dry to the touch, but a little bit of gentle squeezing should get my black ink to Oh, look at that. Flowing out lovely. Sweet. So we will take a little while to really conclude that this works well. My concern with the, the carbon black, platinum carbon black, is it might flow too much. It's a, it's a thinner ink. So it could have the problem of being a little too wet. Um, uh, but I know that it won't have the problem this did, which was ultimately to get kind of clogged. This one... I could ultimately try to refill again. What's happened here is that in order to make use of this, because I couldn't figure out how that cartridge thing worked before, I tried just modifying the cap. So you'll see here, I've just simply cut it off. And I, I, I put the ink in this. Um, that could work. But I wanted to see what happened if I didn't chop off that piece. So we'll find out. We'll give this one a little time, and then I'll check back in with an update to see how it's worked out.